Louisiana Beer Reviews Steel Reserve Tiki Series Island Punch. This is a special edition revisited. I was going to get the strawberry daiquiri version also, but uh, it was all out of date. This one has got a good date on it, so I don't know which story is on that. Alright, 10% um, alcohol malt beverage with natural flavors and certified color. So 10% alcohol is a little much. Mango and pineapple flavor. But let's read the specifics. The serving size is five ounces. So I'm drinking five times three is 15, of course. So I'm drinking over three times the amount recommended. It is certified kosher, which seems a little strange considering it uses water, corn syrup, barley malt, yeast, hops, sucrose, isn't that table sugar? Yes, citric acid, natural flavors, sodium benzoate, FD and C, food, drug and cosmetic, yellow number six, not number five, yellow number six, and potassium sorbate added for freshness. So, it is natural flavors, natural something that tastes like pineapple and mango, or it is actual mango and pineapple extract. Natural flavors are just derived from things like essential oils, extracts, bark, oleo resins, and so forth. There's leaves, bark, and so forth from nature. All right, according to the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, 2021 was the last time I addressed this. The food coloring gives it the orange appearance. Um, there's no head of foam. There's going to be no lacing. There are bubbles. It's it's clear. So it's overcast day, humid, but at least it's warm, and it's nice to have a warm day during the winter time. The aroma. Yeah, like fruit, fl fruit, fruit, and some malt. So you get the cereal grain, corn, corn products, and the barley. Just generalized cereal. Okay, let's go with the taste. Cheers. I would highly recommend getting these cold and very, very cold. I put it in the freezer for over 20 minutes. It was cold out of the cooler at Circle K. I think it was 375 for two. I bought two, one for an examination, examine the Tiki series, and one for the solo review. Still not a great price, but these days, is anything a great price? I remember when these were two for three. Okay, um, okay, all right. Now, it's not even listed on their nutritional uh, list that I could find. I saw the Steel Reserve series, but they didn't have these two listed. Um, on Miller Molson Coors website. Um, let's see here. They say the corn syrup is totally turned into alcohol. That's what they claim on the website, that the final product has no corn syrup in it. It's totally converted. That starch converted into alcohol. They use it as a fermentation agent. And then it says, okay, we never use high fructose corn syrup. Okay, I'm glad they don't, because it's got a nasty flavor to it, I find. It's not unhealthy, really, per se. It's just nasty, for sure, in my opinion. Versatile product, though, high fructose corn syrup. So you get the fruit flavors, but the under flavor is this kind of high gravity malt beverage a la earthquake high gravity which is the unflavored beer from four loco fusion 
projects. If you ever see the earthquake high gravity, it's pretty harsh, hard to take. It usually tastes nasty. Although sometimes it'll taste okay, so it's telling me they got batch problems. But um, there's no flavoring added to that, so there's nothing to cover it up. And you get the harsh cereal grains and a kind of a weird malt liquor twang to it, kind of eh, chewy in the mouth feel. So with the, on the sweetness scale here, you know with the added sugar, sucrose, table sugar and all that. It's four and a half out of five sugar cubes. It's about as sweet as you could bear. And it does have hops, which is required for any malt beverage by US law. Any malt beverage must contain hops and not just a trace amount. Um, the hops are gonna balance out the sweetness to make it bearable. What kind of hops are they using? I couldn't say, I don't know. Probably just basic hops that they use for a generalized brewing, not specialty hops, you know. It's a nice looking label, I have to admit that. I'm trying to see if there's any other thing to mention here. I'm trying to carefully check it out. Yeah, nowhere does it say the word beer, and nowhere does it say malt liquor. It just say malt beverage. Well, a beer is a malt beverage. Ale or lager, they're all types of malt beverages. This is a flavored malt beverage. FMB, as the U.S. government calls them. Um, body is... The body is... See, it's starting to have that fermented grains aroma. It's hard to mask that, I guess, at 10%. You yeah. know, grain products. High, medium, let's say... Not quite heavy body, but it's close to heavy as you can get without it being heavy. Um, semi-sweet finish. At least the finish is semi-sweet and not just straight up cloying sweet gross. Uh, but I want to drink this often. No, uh, once every two years for a revisit or never again would be two good options. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad product, but I, it can't be healthy to drink this kind of stuff all the time. Why? I see people drinking this all the time, these kind of things. They'll say, I'm going to get my juice for my children. And I'm looking... That's what I'm saying. That's Hawaiian punch. That's not juice. Okay, you know, juice is real stuff. But and then they drink people drinking stuff like this, and you say, "Oh, why well, these people have diabetes and other kind of health problems?" Well, uh, this is something to drink once or twice a year, maybe quarterly. You know, every three months. But all the time, as your standby, you're out of your you're out of your mind, really. And I see a lot of people drinking expensive craft beers. No, no knock against that now. And these people have got money, most of them that I know, they, they can afford it. But they drink it all these 11, 12, 10, 11, 12, 13, 9, 8, 11, 12 craft beers. Uh, half the ones, or 75% or of the ones they're drinking is chocolate stout. This with vanilla, this with cream, this with um, uh, all kind of flavoring. Basically, they're drinking expensive flavor malt beverages. They're drinking expensive versions of what, what we're looking at right now. And I see these people as very overweight, and uh, with a huge belly, and uh, and they cooking big meals at night. Now, so it's um, if you do it on the um, canned convenience store level or the uh, expensive bottle shop level, you're still doing it in a bad way because you're loading your body up with all these 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 sugary sweet. It's like eating chocolate cake all day, you know, in a liquid form. I just don't see. The point of it but anyway that's the, the question here is not that a rant about healthy eating no the question is um, is this a good product or not the fact that it showcases in it to an extent the cereal grain the barley and the corn products corn syrup is a corn product um, derived from corn obviously <laughs> um, I think that actually helps it because it's got it, it's letting you know this is a beer 
Uh, food coloring, I don't really get uh, in a conniption fit over food coloring because um, a lot of people I know that would say, oh, I'll never drink a beer with food coloring, and then they'll turn right around and eat food like a snack with food coloring. I'm like, well, you're eating a snack. It's got food coloring. You don't seem to have it. take issue with that. So that's sort of bogus, you know. If it, this was clear, you know, it really wouldn't appear to people. Appear, appear to whoa. It would appear to you. Just be clear, it wouldn't appeal to you. So, it, it's. This shirt is all stained. This is bizarre. I see a pink spot or orange. Spot. It's like this shirt shirt is oxidized. Through uh, age, it's not that old. Okay, I'll never wear this again. When I had it in the house, it looked pure white. Now I see it's tainted. Huh. Well, it's going in the trash. Um, yes, people say a trash bear, trash bear. Um, I'm like the U.S. government in some ways, in the sense that they don't. Well, they'll never use the term junk food. They just say it's a contextual approach. You have to look at things in a, in a context, okay? And I like to do that too. So if you look at this in the proper context, it's all right. It's, it's not, it's well done. They, I guess they make it taste like mango and pineapple. I'm not too good at breaking down fruit flavors, but uh, yeah. Is it a gourmet product? Obviously not. But heck, it's enjoyable enough, even though it's not my thing. Uh, I'd, I'd review a lot of wheat beers and never care to drink those. So, um, yeah. If you were a little kid and you like orange drink, I want to get an orange drink, you know, like a knee high or sun kiss. I think they have a, a carbonated soft drink version of that. Or big shot orange yeah it it'd be fine and uh, this is the adult version of the orange drinks but you know this is orange and cobas you know the mango and pineapple so yeah I'm gonna go with 91 out of 100 a 91 it sounds preposterous to say this is in into the excellent range but I think it's credible because it's it is what it's supposed to be and we don't on this channel say there's bad styles different styles they don't appeal to everyone but it, it's it's an excellent to an extent beer with a flavor <laughs> flavor malt beverage within its style so I'm going to end this review by saying lazy les bon temps relay very interesting product um, and I'm gonna also say go to Milwaukee Wisconsin and tour the Miller brewery fascinating tour <laughs>